Hey guys, it's Coach Kaiser here to talk about dichotomous keys. So today your goal is to be able to write a taxonomic scientific name correctly and to be able to use a dichotomous key to classify and to name an organism. So let's get started. Taxonomic classification is just a classifying system and it's used to group organisms by their characteristics or features. There's levels of taxonomic classification. The broadest is domain, and then we have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So this diagram will just help you to remember that domain is the broadest, it's the biggest, and then species is the most specific. Binomial nomenclature is a two-word naming system that uses the genus and the species. This uh, way of naming organisms was developed from the ideas of Carl Linnaeus. So some examples um, using this would be Felis rufus. So we have the genus is Felis and the rufus is the species and this is the name for a bobcat. If you want to know what we call people, it's Homo sapiens. So why do sciences use this? Well, we use this so that we can talk to each other across the world because not everybody speaks English. So this binomial nomenclature system um, helps scientists and people to communicate around the world no matter what language they speak, everybody understands the genus and the species. So how would you write one? Well, you always use you always capitalize the first letter of the genus and then the species is always written in lowercase. Then you can either underline it, italicize it, or abbreviate it. So italicize you can do on the computer. Um, it's kind of a slant. Um, if you were ha to handwrite it, it looks more like cursive. All right, dichotomous keys. So what are dichotomous keys? It's just basically a list of yes, no questions. And if the answer is yes, then you go this way if, and you keep following the yeses until you arrive at a name. So these are two pictures of, or examples of dichotomous keys. So let's try one out. So I made up a pretty simple one using shoes just to, for us to start out with. So we're always going to start with question number one and we have two questions. And so one answer is going to be yes and that's the, one, the route that we will follow. So this shoe does not cover the toes completely. This shoe covers the toes completely. So my toes would go down here. So that would cover the toes completely. So we're gonna move on to question number three. So I don't care about question two. It says go to question three. So here are my options now. Whoops. So this shoe does cover the ankle. And so it is called Shoe Kaiser. All right, let's try one more to be sure that we got it. New shoe. Same dichotomous key, new shoe. This shoe does not cover the toes completely or this shoe covers the toes completely. It does not cover the toes. So we're going to move to question number two. This shoe has a heel or this shoe is flat? This shoe is flat, so this one is named shoe deal. So again, I don't care about question three because I've already figured out the name is shoe deal. Well, in science, we are going to all right, so let's talk about some common leaf characteristics since in science we're going to focus on leaves and insects when we use dichotomous keys. There are simple leaves, which means it's just a single leaf. And some leaves are compound and they're made up of individual leaflets. So now when we're looking at the leaflets, they can be arranged in several patterns. They can alternate each side of the stem. They might come in pairs and be on opposite sides of each other. Or they could be in groups that are all connected at the same point and just around the stem, which is called world. Some more leaf characteristics. So this one would be like heart-shaped. If you look at the edge, it's called smooth. Sometimes it's called entire for being smooth. Lobed which it kind of looks like an earlobe on the edges. This one has waves. It's just kind of wavy, look like an ocean wave. This one is an oval shape, so kind of like an egg shape. And if you look at the edges, it's very sharp or rough or jagged. So it's, it's sometimes it's called tooth and sometimes it's called serrated. So this is a narrow leaf. 
Um, so this one up here on this heart-shaped one would be a broad leaf if they had the opposite of narrow. A bristol tip means at the end there's this point um, or extension at the end. Normally it's kind of prickly. Coniferous have more, have different kinds. So this one, the scale-like one, like a fish's scale, would be found on a coniferous tree. This one would also be found on a coniferous tree. It's needle-like, and at, it's actually a cluster of needles. It's actually a cluster of five needles. So those are some common leaf characteristics. So here we just have a insect, and so it shows you, okay, the most people know where the head is. The next segment of the body is called the thorax. And then the end segment is called the abdomen. So um, there's also diff there's normally pairs of legs on an insect. There's, uh, sometimes they have wings. The, there's front wings and there's also hind, wing, hind wings. Um, often insects have antennas that are shaped different ways. And some will have simple eyes, some will have compound eyes, and some may have both. So those are just some features that you would need to know where they're located if you were doing a insect dichotomous key. So let's practice using this leaf. Let's see if we can figure it out. So we're always going to start with question number one. So now we have two options. If the edge of the leaf has no teeth, waves, or lobes. If the edge of the teeth has teeth, waves, or lobes. So I'm looking. It looks like it is not smooth, so I'm just going to say yes, it does have teeth, waves, or lobe. So that means I'm going to question number three. So we're skipping down to question number three. If the leaf edge is tooth, or does it have waves or lobes? So tooth, if you remember from your characteristics, that would be toothed. And so the name of this leaf, whoops, so the name of this leaf would be a Lombardi poplar. Let's try one more. So we have a new leaf, but we're using the same dichotomous key. Starting with question one again. If the edge of the leaf has no teeth, waves, or lobe. If the edge of the leaf has teeth, waves, or lobe. So it looks pretty smooth along the edge. So we're going to say it does not have teeth, waves, or lobe. So we're going to question number two. If the leaf has a single bristle at its tip, so I'm going to look at the end to see if it has an extension. I don't see one, so we're going to go with no single bristle. And so we're going to question number four. If the leaf is heart-shaped, oh look, it does kind of look like a heart, and the veins are branching from the base. So these right here are veins, and this is the base or the bottom of the leaf. So we have veins that are coming from the base. So I would agree with that. So it's going to be named a red bud. This actually comes from a red bud tree. All right, so just to wrap it up, things that you should have got out of this video. Order, you should know the order of the levels of the taxonomic classification. I could ask, what if, tell me them from complex to simple. And then you would say domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I might ask you to tell me from simple to most complex, so you would start with the smallest. Species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, domain. You should also be able to recognize how to write a scientific name. It always includes the genus and the species. The first letter of the genus is capitalized and everything else is written in lowercase. You could either underline it, italicize it, or abbreviate the genus. So why is scientific names important? It's, a sign, it's important because not everybody in the world speaks English, and we need to be able to communicate with everyone about what organisms we're talking about. And you should be able to use a dichotomous key. So you watched me use a dichotomous key today, and today you're going to now practice using that dichotomous key. So if you're not sure of these other things, then you probably need to rewind and listen again. If you need help working on dichotomous keys, you can ask a buddy in a class or find your teacher. Thanks.